All right, so we've talked about um, hydrides, uh, sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride, with additions to carbonyls, to aldehydes and ketones. Um, and now we're moving on to carbon nucleophiles. And one that we've seen before is the acetylide ion. So just to kind of bring that back into context, we learned about that in chapter 11. Fan favorite, first time we ever made a carbon-carbon bond. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, so how did that work? So go ahead and predict the product here. And go ahead and, and, and show what's happening in each step. So um, when we add reagent 1, what's happening here? That would make blah, whatever is there. If we add reagent 2, what's happening here? Um, so go ahead and fill in those blanks. Maybe write out some mechanisms to kind of jog your memory. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, pause it, do that, and then come back. So, all right, you just did that. Great job. So um, what is this step? This first step, uh, we're treating this acetylide ion with sodium NH2. NH2 is a strong base, and the pKa of the alkyne carbon hydrogen bond, what is that? You got it, it's 25. So if we treat the, acetyl, uh, the acetylene with the uh, NH2 minus, it's going to deprotonate that because that would form NH3 <clears throat> and the acetylide ion, so the deprotonated ion. Um, what, is this favorable in the forward direction? Well, how can we tell that? We can tell that based on pKa's. What's the pKa of NH3? Great, you knew it. It's 38. So this is favorable in the forward direction because we're moving away from the stronger acid. What happens next? Uh, we took our acetylide ion. It's negatively charged. It's a nucleophile. It wants to add electron density to a positive charge. And we're adding CH3Br to that. Uh, we know that this is a polarized bond, a partial minus on that Br, a partial plus on that carbon. So this is just going to be a straight up SN2 reaction. So that would essentially add a CH3 to the other side of that acetylene. Um, so acetylide ions were strong nucleophiles. And um, what reaction types did we see? Uh, that's kind of at the bottom of the page, the reaction types. Um, the first reaction type we saw was just acid-base chemistry, right? Um, that's something that we, we've known for a long time, acid-base, I should say base. Um, what was the second reaction? This was just a substitution reaction. So we're, we're putting reaction types together with stuff like this, but what we really need to focus on is the individual steps are stuff that we already understand. And we're going to see that that can be easily applied to when we add these to ketones or aldehydes. So that'll be right about now. All right, so we've seen acetylide ions doing substitution reactions. What's gonna happen now? So uh, we've added the same first reagent. Um, that's going to do the same first type of reaction. We're doing an acid-base reaction with reagent one. Um, that's going to, for the same exact reason that we just talked about, deprotonate that alkyne CH generating that acetylide ion in NH3. NH3, we're not going to really draw in. It's not really doing anything anymore. Um, what's going to happen next? Next, so this is reagent one. Next, we have reagent two. Reagent two is a ketone. Looks like that. Well, what did the acetylide ion do last time? The acetylide ion last time, the negative flowed to the positive. Um, that's kind of all organic chemistry is for the most part. Negative slowing to positives and, and going from high energy to low energy intermediates. So where is the negative? The negative is still on that acetylide ion. Where's the positive? The positive is now, again, we have a partial negative on that oxygen, a partial positive on that carbon of the carbonyl. So instead of an SN2 reaction, instead of a substitution reaction, we're getting a nucleophilic addition reaction where the electrons are added to the carbonyl carbon and the electrons are moving up to that oxygen. So um, that provides this intermediate here. So that reaction was nucleophilic addition. It looks just like the hydride adding, except for now it's a carbon. So really it's, it's, it's no different than that hydride addition. So this second reaction is nucleophilic addition. Is that the same as substitution? No, it's addition. We're not substituting one thing for another. We're just adding the nucleophile to the species. 
So what's our last step here? What's the point of that? Um, again, we can't really isolate this anionic um, product because it's going to be stuck in the water layer if we uh, try to uh, um, use our standard extraction methods of purification. So we have to somehow make it neutral. So just like we did with the hydride reagents, especially with lithium aluminum hydride, we had to quench the reaction at some point, add um, a, a, essentially an acid quench step. So we're adding H plus to this in the form of H3O plus, the basic species that, an, that alkoxide an, anion is going to be attracted to the partial positive on the hydrogens that are attached to the oxygen. That bond breaks and we then have our product which is the alcohol that the acetylate ion added to. <clears throat> so, so this is a, a, a nucleophilic addition type to aldehydes and ketones, but I want to again show that these usually work all the same. We have a partial positive there. Nucleophiles are going to add to that partial positive. So negative sort of positives, what about the ball rolls downhill? We say that we go from high energy intermediates to low energy products. Did we do that here? Um, so um, let's think about that in right about now. Also, I forgot uh, third reaction. That's just a proton transfer. What kind of a reaction is that? Yep, acid base. Good job. So we got acid base. So are there any new reactions here? Reaction one, just an acid base. Reaction three, just an acid base. Things that we know about very well. Um, reaction two, nucleophilic addition. That's kind of new. We know about it from the um, hydride additions that we just learned about in this chapter, but that's this is kind of the new reaction for this entire chapter, but it pretty much always works the same way. So um, keep that in mind. So now we're going to move on to is the ball rolling downhill? All right, is the ball rolling downhill? So how have we thought about this in the past? And a way to kind of uh, ball mark or ball, ballpark, not mark, ballpark stability is, is relating it to acid base chemistry. Um, reactions proceed to the most stable species and compound stability can be related to pKa values. Which side of this reaction was favored? Um, something we've kind of talked about just a moment ago, but um, this kind of goes back to the acid base chemistry, right? Uh, the pKa here of this acid is 25. The pKa of this acid, we just talked about what is it? Yep, it's 38. So um, which side is favored of this reaction? Um, and and the, the favored side would be going away from the stronger acid. This is the stronger acid. So that means this is the more favored side. Um, and essentially the anion is more stable if the conjugate acid is stronger. So this anion's conjugate acid is that. This conjugate acid is stronger. That means that this anion is more stable and we're going to proceed to the most stable anion. Um, this is a weaker acid, meaning that this anion is less stable. Um, so uh, how does that relate to our reaction? Really, our reaction, we're dealing with the stability of an acetylide anion versus an oxygen anion, right? Because if you, if you look back in the video, what were, we, what were we doing? We were adding an acetylide ion to a carbonyl, which generates uh, an, an oxygen anion. So actually, I'm going to draw that real quick. All right, so what's the reaction we were looking at? We were looking at the reaction of an acetylide adding to a carbonyl generating a new carbon-carbon bond and an oxygen anion in the process. So essentially, what side is favored? The, the side on the left or the side on the right? Uh, which anion is more stable? And again, we, we can think about that the, way, the same way that we think about acid-base chemistry, which is why I tried so hard to get you guys to memorize all those pKa values at, at the start. Um, so which side is favored down here? Well, this pKa of an, of an alcohol is going to be about 16. This pKa of our acetylide ion is 25. Um, so this is the stronger acid. This side is favored. So we are forming the more stable anion. So what side is favored up here then? Well, 
which side is more stable? Is a carbon anion of an acetylide more stable or is an oxygen anion more stable? This side's more stable, which tells us that the negative is flowing to the positive and the ball is rolling downhill. We are generating something that is more stable in the products than what we had in the reactants. Um, so that is kind of the why this reaction works. Um, so, all right, that's the satellite ions. We're gonna see even more nucleophiles coming up shortly.